Well, the COVID pandemic put mental health in the spotlight, especially for kids. And while the need for mental health services has been growing, the number of professionals available to meet that need has not. And that's been placing pediatricians on the front line of Michigan's mental health crisis. In 2007, my oldest son, Dominique, was 20 years old. Uh, he was diagnosed uh, with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. It was a bolt from the blue. Dominique was a sophomore in college, a kid with a dazzling smile, but the diagnosis was the start of a turbulent two and a half years for Kevin Fisher and the Fisher family. We struggled trying to understand all of this, how to help him. And unfortunately, on June 27th of 2010, we lost him to suicide. Today, Kevin is executive director of NAMI Michigan, a grassroots mental health organization. He says while stigma is a major barrier to care, when those who do seek help reach out, too often, there's no one there. Finding a child psychiatrist or psychologist is like finding a unicorn. And that's backed up by a new survey from researchers at the University of Chicago that finds 69% of kids and teens did not receive mental health care or substance care at least once when reaching out, compared to just 17% for physical health. This room was born out of the pandemic. Dr. Salvatore Bentamiglia of Shelby Pediatric Associates says it's pediatricians like him who are filling the void left by the scarcity of pediatric mental health providers. Upwards of a third of my day can be spent with various uh, mental health issues going on in kids. Kids as young as five years old are struggling with behavioral problems, but most common are kids dealing with anxiety and depression. Ventimiglia says there are more patients seeking help after the pandemic and providers are retiring at a faster pace. The flood of patients has providers like him reaching out for a psychiatric refresher. Reaching out to mental health professionals in this community. I think that's really where I've learned the most in the on the job training we've had to do and bolstering his staff with nurse practitioners with certifications in mental health and adding a psychologist to meet patient demand. But he says the first line of care starts at home. Have an open conversation about what their kids are going through, what they're thinking, and not to be afraid to ask. A key point, according to NAMI Michigan's Kevin Fisher, who says his son Dominique's diagnosis was bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, but that it was stigma that dealt the final blow. He was made to feel that it was his fault. He was made to feel weak. He stopped taking his medication. It's a little blunt, but I said, you know, stigma killed my son. But even after the pandemic, stigma is still a problem. Uh, Kevin says that prior to the pandemic, they were reporting 75% of those diagnosed with a mental illness said that they felt that they were victims of stigma. And now, three years later, 87% of that population says they're living with the stigma as someone who has a mental health issue. So the solution has to be twofold. One, erasing the stigma, but also making sure there are enough providers available when people seek help. And we know that kids are going to be seeking help. They're going back to school. All the pressures that they're under with school, sports, the social aspect, that need is there. We just have to make sure there are enough providers. And as far as that stigma goes, everyone's fighting their own personal battle and we should all show each other kindness no matter what. And, and Grace, you know, if someone has a, a heart problem, there's no stigma. It's exactly. the same thing. Exactly, and it it's shouldn't be that way. Without a doubt.